We're going to have Kip come on and talk about Antarctica. Man, she's got such a presentation, it's too much for me. Like, it's pages and pages and pages and pages in scripture. And it's, yeah. uh, she's very detailed in her research. And I was like, Kip, please come on. <laughs> Um, yeah, this is really interesting because there's she's she was going to refer to some scriptures that I had never looked at in the way that she describes them before, like talking about the ends of the earth. You know, when I read that, I assumed it was the end of the earth, like it was going to be destroyed. But she's going to show us that, it, you know, what if it's in reference to Antarctica or the North Pole, the ends literally of the earth, you know, the points at where it spins. There will be wonders in the sun, moon, and stars. This is from AF. Thank you very much. Yes, there are wonders in the sun, moon, and stars. If you haven't seen our video on the seven seals, um, we go through, uh, you know, some wonders in the sun, moon, and stars. Also, the interview with Ben is really interesting. And then there's another one with Kip, uh, where she went through her research on the sun, moon, and stars. So, there's a massive amount of things to consider in regards to the sun, moon, and stars. Yeah, I see comments uh, pretty often that says, you know, no man will know the day or hour because we talk about this in the rapture. And that is that is true. But Daniel is very clear that you will know the signs and the season and to look up and watch for the signs and that the wise will see these signs. Only the wicked will be deceived like a thief in the night. So you're right, we may not know the hour and the day that much is clear because Jesus doesn't even know that. But we will know, uh, have a good uh, good idea for the season and the signs. That's just my take on yeah. it. And then here's another one from AF. Philip Schneider, patriot and a badass, fought alien greys. There's big ones in the underground that Phil board in for the U.S. government. I'm not sure what that means. Do you know what that means? What, what was the guy's name? AF. Or Phil Schneider, Philip Schneider. Oh yeah, I told told you guys that story about two weeks ago. He lost his fingers. He was a underground bunker mm. builder that used. He was a contractor for the federal government. He had he was taken out by the uh, black site feds. They killed mm. him okay. along with his friend. And he said on he he was on TV doing a presentation or a conference and says in it, and next time I come here I'm going to provide all the locations of all the black site underground bases. Mm -hmm. And within two months, he was found dead, uh, had, had, you know, uh, unlived himself. Wow. Yeah. And he said right on TV, he's like, look, I'm not looking and thinking about doing this, but if this happens to me, you know why. Mm -hmm. Wow. Yep. Yeah. Well, and, and that's the thing. We know that these deep underground military bases exist. We oh, sure. know that they, you know, we know that they're at least two miles deep. Um, what did they awaken up there? What did they run into? I mean, down there, what, what, you know, um, it reminds me of uh, Lord of the Rings, you know, oh, when the dwarves had dug too deep, they awakened the bow rock. Well, you are, yeah, yeah. Yeah. I'm, I'm thinking what in the world did our military, um, and probably other militaries around the world, what did they find down there and who are they talking to? We know because we have whistleblowers like this guy telling us that they mm. have, accessed fallen angel um technology hmm. that's that's who they are they're talking to and working side by side with you know i i listen to a lot of different podcasts and there are other people who are speaking um on podcasts not video um and under anonymity and they're telling their stories and it's funny how many of them absolutely match up so hmm. and you know Right now, it's it's easy to say, yeah, that makes total sense, doesn't it? <laughs> right. Yeah, I wonder yeah. if, uh, you know, the scripture talks about uh, behemoth and Leviathan. Uh, I believe it is in Job. I almost wonder. It's like Leviathan. I wonder if it's not a literal um, creature in the ocean. And then behemoth, it if, it's not, if it's not something, uh, you know, underground or somewhere on earth that we haven't seen yet. Well, behemoth is very, very clearly a brachiosaur. Um, I've heard that, and, yeah. And God, God says, behold the behemoth whom I made along with you. What? 
whom I made along with you on day six. So he's telling, you know, and, and he's, he's talking to Job. He's like, look right there. Behold, look right there. Mm-hmm. There's one right there. And Job wasn't running and screaming. And he says, and, and, you know, it, it eats plants, behold, you know, it's the, the produce of the hills, feed it, and look at the animals playing nearby. Nothing's afraid of this thing. It's not mm-hmm. harmful. Um, but when it lays down, it blocks rivers, you know, and it has mm-hmm. a tail like a cedar tree. Um, mm-hmm. Elephants and, and uh, uh, hippopotamuses have little cedar twigs, you know. So... Um, and it's very clearly, uh, Leviathan is very clearly a fire-breathing dragon. And God actually calls Satan uh, the, that dragon, that serpent of old. Mm-hmm. So, so it was a real thing. It lived in the oceans. And, you know, we did that show a couple of weeks back. And I was on a Thursday. It was on, no, it wasn't. It was on a Sunday when we did marine spirits. And we know that Satan has control of the oceans, you know, that's where the Leviathan spirit lives. Um, and so it, it totally makes sense that if there are, is art and carvings and all this stuff from cultures all around the world showing dragons, if they were real, I mean, if they weren't, if they were mythological, how would every culture know how to draw the same thing? Oh, yeah. They had to be real. Yeah. They yeah. have to be real. Oh. Oh yeah, and they've they've even found there there's there's more than one creature that can breathe fire. You know, oh, the bomb, yeah. we talked about the bombardier, the bombardier beetle. beetle. Now, literally fires fire out of its butt. It mixes two chemicals together and it gets so hot that it burns. Uh, mm-hmm. But they, you know, with the bones that they found from you know dinosaurs, aka dragons, um, there's there's strong evidence that many of them also uh, could potentially breathe fire. What a weird thing. <laughs> Yeah. Well, you know, it's funny because uh, Gary Stearman of Prophecy Watchers, they have this really great magazine, and he mm-hmm. believes that, that the four living creatures around God's throne, these uh, cherubim, that there mm-hmm. used to be five of them. Because he says four is a really weird number. For, there must have been five. And besides, Satan or Lucifer was called a cherub. And mm-hmm. he believes that he was a reptile or dragon cherub hmm. and that the whole uh, dinosaur realm was probably um, uh, related more to him than it was, you know, made by God. Now, uh, God himself said, whom I made along with you. So I'm not sure about that. But anyway, I just, I know Gary Stearman believes that somehow that whole dinosaur realm is, is, uh, connected to Lucifer, the dragon cherub. Yeah, it wouldn't surprise me. I know that there are animal spirits, which if there are animal spirits, then it would stand to reason that those came somehow from the Nephilim. Whether the Nephilim, when they were messing with things genetically, or if that's not part of their offspring, you know, part mm-hmm. of the genetic corruption. Uh, because we know that the animal spirits are a thing. So either animals have spirits or it's a result of that um, mixing of the seed. Yeah. And I don't know. Um, I really don't. <laughs> I don't have a clue on that one. Me neither. But, you know, yeah. We were going we to talk about Antarctica today because the it's funny how the World Economic Forum and all of the governments and um, and all of the big defense contractors, you know, the military industrial complex, they have this fascination with Antarctica. I mean, and Chris mm-hmm. has noticed that too. Yeah. Chris, are you there? No, it's just you and me. Oh, did you have Probably. to go take care of the kids? Or getting coffee. So, okay. Well, that's the whole deal. Is is there something going on with Antarctica? Um, and I could not find it. I remember I kept it somewhere, but I've got so many files in so many different places. Um, Klaus Schwab and uh, Yuval Noah Harari and mm-hmm. Macron from France, a lot of these world leaders, they post on Twitter, oh, you know, stuff about going to Antarctica, on my way to Antarctica, coming back. Why? 
Why? What's down there? You know? And so, uh, you know, we always do everything from the lens of scripture on this show. So I thought, okay, let's look up Antarctica. Let's see, is it anywhere in the Bible? And Job 38, 29 through 30 says, from whose womb comes the ice and the frost of the heaven? Who gives it birth? The waters harden like stone, and the surp- surface of the deep is frozen. So that is God speaking to Job, and he's saying, you, you know, Job, where does, where does all this ice come from? The surface, the surface of the deep is frozen. Is he talking about Antarctica? It sounds like he sure is. There's hmm. another thing that, that is said in the Bible a lot that could very well be Antarctica, and it absolutely makes sense. It's the ends of the earth. Yeah, I was talking about that before you came on. I'd always assumed that that was the end of the world, like the end of Earth. But you're right, ends of the Earth. Why not be the poles? Yeah, and we know that there's no land at the North Pole, but there is Mm -hmm. land at the South Pole. So there's probably the ends of the Earth is probably more the South Pole than anything. Well, okay, so 37 times in the New King James— uh, the ends of the earth are mentioned. So, and this is an interesting one. Um, do, do, do Job thirty eight thirteen that the dawn might take hold of the ends of the earth and the wicked be shaken out of it. Hmm. Hmm. Is God telling Job that there are wicked beings at the ends of the earth at the South Pole? Yeah, a, a lot of uh, believers in flat Earth reference the. Uh, that being scripture supporting flat earth. And uh, no, I was listening to you guys. It's just if I cut to a screen that's just a two of you is because my kids are killing each other and I got to go take care of business. <laughs> so I try not to alarm you guys or stop the story or, you know, interrupt. No, that was so perfect if transition. I, if, I ever totally just cut, if I ever just cut yeah. to uh, two screens like I'm getting ready to do because someone's knocking at my door, I have to deal with my children. I'm sorry. Yeah, and we're going to have to do a flat earth thing, but I, I'm not the person to do that at all. <laughs> but yeah, so first, uh, first Samuel 2.10, the adversaries of the Lord shall be broken in pieces. From heaven he will thunder against them. The Lord will judge the ends of the earth. Hmm. Why would he judge the ends of the earth, Antarctica, if it were uninhabited? Are the adversaries of the Lord hiding there? I mean, what's going on here? You know, uh, Psalm 65, 5, by awesome deeds and righteousness, you will answer us. O God of our salvation, you are the confidence of all the ends of the earth and all the far off seas. Huh. See, now when it's in that context... When it when 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 you actually have the ends of the earth and the far off seas, that sounds like it could be a location. Mm-hmm. Huh. Yep. And and that is another one because the uh, I know that the flat Earth folks believe that that Antarctica is not a solid landmass. It's like this ring. Um, mm-hmm. It's actually and that there are seas on the other side of it. Hmm. You know. Hmm. Um, do I know? I have no clue. And, and for me, you know, that kind of stuff is not a hill to die on. A lot of the stuff we talk about, it's fun to talk about, it's fun to suspect, but it's not a salvation issue. So, um, so yeah, so we all, we love to talk about this stuff and we love to spar around a little bit, but, but you know, we're, we're not going to argue about it or quit talking to one another, you know, because we disagree on flat earth versus round earth or dinosaurs or anything like that. So, now this one is really interesting. Psalms 135.7, and you're going to love this one, watchful. He causes the vapors to ascend from the ends of the earth. He makes Mm. lightning for the rain. He brings the wind out of its treasuries. Mm. The vapors to ascend from the ends of the earth. Is that the aurora borealis? Is that where weather is formed? What do you think? That reminds me of Enoch. I think it's Enoch where he was shown, is it Enoch or was it someone else who was shown the mysteries of where the wind comes from? Hmm. Is that Enoch? Do you guys know what I'm talking about? I, yeah, I can't remember if Enoch was shown that. I know that this is this. You know, Job was was challenged by God. He basically said, "Why, why, God?" And God was like, "Can you tell me where this came from? Can you, you know?" Oh yeah, that's also the other right. location. Yeah. Hmm. But, yeah, he causes yeah. the vapors to ascend from the ends of the earth. Yeah, I think of wind. 
the aurora borealis is is uh, that's ionization in the atmosphere, right? From the um, from the sun, right? That's the the radiation from the sun. Mm-hmm. Well, and because I was even thinking like frequencies and electricity. Because uh, we aurora all aurora borealis. That. Yeah, the aurora well, borealis. That's in our protective shield. Um, the ionosphere is absorbing those um, everything that's coming off the sun, and as it weakens, yeah. and normally you can only see the aurora from the like Alaska and very north and very south. And Ben explains that uh, one of the symptoms of the this weakening, which will deliver the solar kill shot, not be able to absorb the brunt. Any longer is that you, you know, there was times last year you could see this in Texas. Wow. Mm-hmm. So it, these yeah. are signs that it's weakening. Well, watchful. Yeah. I'm pretty sure you can see the Aurora f- from where you're at. At times. Yeah. yeah. Uh, more, more frequent, more, more recently. Yeah. Yeah. Cause I, I used to be able to see it in Spokane, Davenport, mm-hmm. Washington, that area. So, but yeah, cause I was thinking, the vapors could that be frequencies could that be electricity because we know you know tesla is pretty much the one that taught us that the earth is a big engine you know Mm -hmm. and job 37 3 says god sends his voice forth under the whole heaven his lightning to the ends of the earth lightning his lightning his electricity to the end Mm -hmm. of the earth so i just you know i was wondering maybe if that's what those vapors were Kind of fun mm-hmm. to think about, but yeah. Anyway, so here we go. So Proverbs seventeen twenty four: Wisdom is in the sight of him who has understanding, but the eyes of the fools are on the ends of the earth. Okay, hmm. so the Uh-oh. eye of the fool. Stop looking, I don't want to be a fool. <laughs> is on the end of the earth. Well, the we know we've already we've already talked about the World Economic Forum and all the major oh, yeah. NATO con- nations. Um, are all shaking their fists at God. They've got bases and claims on land in Antarctica. In, in Antarctica. Um, and we've been told it's uninhabitable, so why is everybody fighting over it? So we've got a graphic here of the land claim of that's, um, that's happening down here. There's, do there's seven. Christopher? I'll pull it up. Yeah. So there's there's seven countries that maintain territorial claims in Antarctica, uh, and the United States is not one of them. Um, but we dispute; <laughs> we don't recognize anyone's claims. So yeah. all these all these nations have have claimed land, and and we refuse to acknowledge their claims because we're we're us. <laughs> um, so and these nations are uh, Argentina, Australia, Chile, France, New Zealand, Norway which is kind of mm. weird. Norway, sh- North Pole, sure, but South Pole? Hmm. Um, uh, in the United Kingdom. So, and some of them Rose you could Maine. see because I think it's Chile is the closest nation to um, Antarctica. And then after that, New Zealand and Austra- Australia and New Zealand are, are the closest to it. Um, and all three of those have made claims, but you know, Argentina, France, Norway, United Kingdom. And then, so there's see, all I don't see a graphic. I just have your PDF, honey. Um, okay. I have so. a Godzilla trailer. Oh, okay. Well, keep that Godzilla, Godzilla trailer. We're going to need it. I, I will see. Let me uh, look, look back in your email to an earlier send. Oh, all right. Oh. There's an earlier send for me that's got all the graphics in it. So yeah. anyway, so not only is there are there these territories, you know, and it's it's cut up like a pie. It it really does look like a pie. Um, but there's also stations. So you may not have a claim to territory, but you might have put a station there. Now the nations that have stations. Uh, for exploration or whatever um, on, in, on, on Antarctica, blah, blah, say that 10 times fast, are the U.S., Brazil, China, Poland, South Korea, Uruguay, Russia, and Ukraine. <laughs> Ukraine, mm. you guys, no joke. So there's, there's the picture right there 
Um, you can see you, the UK, Argentina, Ukraine, the US, Chile, more Argentina. And then if you go back to that, that other graphic that I had of the, the, um, the territories, it's cut up more like a, a pie. Um, you can see like where Russia has its bases. So, um, but yeah, it's funny to me, Ukraine. What? <laughs> Why so, does yeah. Ukraine have, have any stake whatsoever? Now, um, the big thing that we, we are finding out is that the stuff that is down there is, is not good stuff, and that we know. So could fallen angels and their half-breed offspring be handing, hanging out in Antarctica? What do you guys hmm. think? You guys think that that's possible, that, that the really bad stuff is down there? Because scripture kind of makes it sound like there's I, a reason for that. I almost wonder if... I almost wonder if it's not part of the bottomless pit. That could be. Yeah. That because we know be. at the end times, the bottomless pit is opened up and all kinds of weird stuff comes out. That's right. Well, here's the fun part. Okay. So movies and predictive programming, right? So Transformers, the Transformers movie in 2007. And uh, yeah, I took my kids to the Transformers movie. So I had to call my daughter, which Transformer movie was, was uh, Archibald w Wiki? Um, did he go to uh, Antarctica and find Megatron under the ice? And it was the very first one. So yeah. So uh, in, in, Transformers, the very first one, that is where Megatron was found under the ice. So Transformers, what's Transformers? Think the four living creatures who make up God's throne in Ezekiel 1. Well, because their Ezekiel faces changes, their face chains. Yeah, well, and, and these four living creatures come together and they make the throne of God. Of God, which seems to be a chariot of fire or like a UFO mm. type thing. So they're separate things. They come together and they, so they're biological tech. It's mm. crazy. It is crazy. And I, I would have to say, in my opinion, I think that flying saucers and drones and things like that are Satan's ripoff and man's ripoff of that biological technology that is separate and then comes together. And that's, hmm. that is kind of what a transformer is. Interesting. Right. Yeah. So that's, that's what I think that I'm throwing that one out there because, you know, here, here we are, you know, why in the world was Megatron in, in uh, Antarctica? Well, and the other question is, is Megatron a ripoff of Metatron? Oh, so, yeah. Yeah. Where was Metatron at, Watchful? Do you remember? Um, <laughs> no, I remember reading about it in Enoch, though, right? Yeah. The Metatron and Enoch? Yeah. It's the name of an angelic being described. It's mostly in the Babylonian Talmud, um, but it's mm. in other mystical writings and in Enoch. And uh, after God took Enoch to heaven, which is Genesis 5.24, he, Enoch was transformed into an angel called Metatron. And his mm. flesh was turned to flame, his veins to fire, his eyeballs to flaming torches. And he was placed on a throne next to the throne of glory. Now, Sweet. according to the rabbis, uh, he is the highest angel in the, and the celestial scribe. And there is hmm. no mention, there's no mention of Metatron at all in the Bible. So just know that. Yeah. But uh, wow. Enoch supposedly turned into Metatron, but Hollywood is talking about Megatron. And is Megatron right. a good guy or a bad guy? Oh, he's a good guy. He's a That's good guy. Megatron? He's a bad guy in the show. He's he's a, is? Yeah. Yeah. He's Megatron's uh, the bad Decepticons. guy. Okay. He's yeah, he's the Decepticon. He's the You're thinking of Optimus did. Prime as the good guy. Oh, that's right. Optimus Prime. <laughs> oh, yes. yep. He's the bad guy. Okay. Yeah. So, now here's the deal. My husband was Japanese. And so we watched every Godzilla and King Kong movie known to man. Even the really bad ones right. from Japan. <laughs> um, every one of them. Um, Sometimes those are the best. 
I, I love know. bad movies. And by the way, guys, it's not <laughs> Godzilla. It's Gojira. Gojira. Okay. So if I don't say that correctly, at least once my daughter will hammer me. So anyway, the movie, uh, my daughter and I watched it about three weeks ago, um, uh, Godzilla King of Monsters with okay. the fabulous Ken Watanabe. Um, Godzilla has to fight this, this thing called Ghidorah. And it's a three-headed dragon from outer space. And where is it being held? Antarctica, Antarctica. I assume. And who huh. is it being held by? The U.S. Godzilla. government. Oh. The U.S. government. <laughs> okay. I didn't yes. see that one. Was it good? It was really, really good. I got to say. I um, watch it. Other than... Ken Watanabe, sad, uh, he sadly gave his life for all of humanity. Oh. Um, yes, he did. Always got to be a hero. <coughs> That's right. You know what's you know he what's interesting about well, you know what's interesting about heroes and <coughs> books or no, about books and movies is they all have to have a hero, and I always liken that to Jesus. It's just like mm-hmm. you, it's it's so fundamental to who we are and who who the creator made us to be that we long for that hero. They're all Mm -hmm. types of Christ, that Messiah who saves. And and we're going to get into that in just a second. So Godzilla, you know, is, is Godzilla, is he Leviathan of Job 41? Mm. Um, Hmm. The weird thing is he is nuclear powered. Yeah. And and he makes his home where Atlantis. Hmm. Hmm. Uh, and we all know that, you know, Satan owns the seas. That's why the Nephilim drown. That's why uh, the herd of pigs ran into the ocean. Uh, the sea is the domain of Le- Leviathan and the fire, you know, who's a fire breathing sea serpent. So, and then Revelation 12, 9 says, so the great dragon was cast out, that serpent of old called the devil and Satan who deceives the whole world. So we have dragon, serpent, devil, and Satan all in one place. He's, we're talking about one thing. The dragon yeah. is Satan, right? So think yeah. about it. God Zilla and hmm. King Kong. Okay, so let's talk about the movie wow. uh, Godzilla versus Kong. Because, you know, okay. like, like I said, in, in Godzilla King of Monsters, he's got to fight this three headed dragon from outer space. Mm, you know, think about that one. Um, they call Kong the Almighty Kong. Hmm. Hmm. King Kong the Almighty? What? So anyway, in this movie, the big takeaway is that Kong exposes the entrance to the hollow earth. And where is it? Antarctica. Antarctica. I'm sensing yep. a theme. Yep. <laughs> Kong makes his home <laughs> on Skull Island. He, and he's hmm. portrayed as being the guardian of people. He's a good guy. And in Godzilla versus King Kong, they're enemies, but guys, that is about to change because only in theaters in 2024, Godzilla X Kong. And we've got a, a huh. X, picture of that. X. you got to throw that one up. I've, I've got a picture of that one in there. Another X? So, yep. Yes, another X, guys. So we've been talking about this, uh, that there's X's everywhere. What are these world elites telling us all the time by these X's everywhere? Planet X. Planet yeah. X, Nibiru. Yeah. And all I know about Nibiru is it's kind of a Mormon belief. I don't know if it's real, but I know the Mormons really do think it is. Mm-hmm. So here's the deal. On the movie poster... At the very top of the movie poster, it says, war is inevitable. War is inevitable. So, is that it? Kong, center of the earth. Godzilla versus Kong. Okay, now that's not the right one, but that's okay. That's all right. Do, 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 do. There's the three-headed that's dragon. Godzilla. Yeah, there's the three-headed one. You can go back to that for a second. So, yeah. Um, so there's the three headed dragon from outer space. It did not belong on earth and, and Godzilla had to take him on Mothra. Mm. Mothra gave herself for, 
for uh, Godzilla as well as Ken Watanabe to give him the nuclear power to overcome this three-headed space dragon. So the movie poster, um, I think it was in the body of the email. I did drop it into the body of the email. Yeah, it's not one of the attachments. You, you got to flap to another one. But anyway, um, do, 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 do. For those so, who are just tuning in and wondering how we got on this subject, we're talking about Antarctica and mm -hmm. if there's references in the scripture and what it could mean. And we're yeah. currently going through different movies that portray uh, different things that are surprisingly in line with stuff that's talking about in scripture with, you know, creatures, um, you know, supernatural creatures like Godzilla Stuff like that. Mm -hmm. So that's how we got on this topic. We're yeah. I mean, I'm and, a, I'm a firm believer in the predictive programming from Hollywood. You know, they very they much talk about they, this. They talk about this stuff for a reason. I saw pits being opened up in the earth. I saw um, something living underneath the earth. Oh, I'm thinking of the hollow, hollow earth stuff. Saw the pyramids. That you know reminded me. I saw somebody um, was speculating why the pyramids generate electricity. And he was putting coils wrapped in a certain way uh, in a pyramid shape and uh, was showing how it's possible that, to generate electricity. Um, so that reminded me of that when I saw it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, Tesla talked about the pyramids and the electricity that derives from the frequency in the Earth. And they found pyramids and also in Alaska and Antarctica. They speculate yep. that yep. these pyramids, these pyramids they speculate were that charged craft that came over and would just literally hover over them. And hmm. they, the every stations. one of them, well, every one of them, if you look at it, they're all uh, direct due North, East, West. They, they're all lined up uh, geometrically to the exact. Right. Um, yeah. It's very interesting, but the ones they found more uh, in Alaska and Antarctica, and it's There's interesting really that you ones in Russia. And hmm. it's interesting that you mentioned um, what was the Atlantis. So when the before the pole shifted, apparently Antarctica. There's a high probability that it was Atlantis because mm -hmm. they found stuff down there that matches up to the story of Atlantis. And when it shifted. It was that what shifted to the poles because that's where exactly the pyramids are. Yeah, interesting. Hmm. Yeah, yeah, it's really fascinating well, and you stuff. Stop and think about it. The the poles are where the energy comes out, and all of the the, the placement of the pyramids covers the whole Earth with an energy field that comes from the poles that is generated from the poles. Hmm. It's crazy. Yeah, it's the, the Earth is a big engine, and and those pyramids that are you know all throughout South America, Central America, you know all kinds of places. So yeah, so let me ask you guys this: Do you guys think that this could be a Hollywood ripoff of the Revelation thirteen Beast from the Sea, Godzilla, and the Beast hmm. from the Earth, King Kong? Sure. Yeah. Sure. Bottomless pit opens. A bottomless pit oh. opening up. Huh. It's right there Yo. in front of us, you guys. Man needs a savior. And in this movie, it's supposedly these two beasts. Um, and one of them even gets, you know, Kong gets a robotic arm. I mean, that's a hats off to transhumanism right there, right? And then they said miracles I didn't even think about that. happen they, sometimes. Yeah. They, they made the beasts look like the good guys. Mm -hmm, they did. Miracles huh. still happen sometimes. Like Revelation 13 says uh, that what seemed to be. Now, we got you guys, we got to remember, really read that scripture. It doesn't say it was a deadly head wound. It said it looked like it seemed like a deadly head wound is healed. Mm. So that's kind of miracle they're talking about because all of a sudden King Kong has a robotic arm. So, but who's the bad guy? If if these guys are the good guys and they're and and they're they're the ripoff of of this beast in the Bible, if it, who's the bad guy? It's this red ape. Remember the big red hand, the big bloody. Oh, hand? that was the bad guy. That's the bad guy. 
Okay, guess what his name is? Scar. <laughs> okay. Scar. Huh. Anybody getting bloody nail scarred hands? Handprints? No. Oh boy. Hmm. Hmm. Jesus. Are they setting people up to believe Jesus is the bad guy and to fight well, him at his return? Well, that's what the that's the Arabic and Muslim faith that the Mahdi comes back and Jesus ascends from heaven to tell everybody that they were wrong. That's how the Quran is written and that mm -hmm. the Mahdi is the real savior and Jesus is his assistant to let everybody know that the Bible is wrong and you're supposed to follow the Mahdi. That's exactly yeah. mm -hmm. how it's, it's written. And the Mahdi described in the Quran matches the Antichrist described in the Bible to the letter. Yeah, well, I'm telling you they, that this movie is the picture of Revelation 13, the, mm. the two beasts, and but it's turned around so that they're the good guys, and that Jesus coming back, that red guy in the middle, he's the bad guy, you know, because it's right. his name is Scar. He's fun. but here's the deal. So back to Antarctica for a second. You know, we we thought we saw Godzilla rising out of of the the glacier in Antarctica. Well, that wasn't Godzilla. Because it says he's going to have help. Okay, so that's Godzilla's icy cousin, Shimo, the frost monster, <laughs> Shimo. Oh. And in Japanese, Shimo. she means death. So, uh, again, the movie poster says March 15th. Well, that's 315. Well, Revelation 315, I know your works that you are neither cold nor hot. I wish you were cold nor hot, but you are oh, lukewarm. Boy. I will have to spit you out. So we've got hot and cold running Godzillas in this movie, right? So, wow. Okay. So even though the movie poster says it's going to be March 15th, that is not the true release date. The true release date is going to be on March 29th, which is Good Friday. Hmm. That was the, the day week. of the Last Supper where Jesus told his disciples to drink his blood, eat his body for the remission of sins. Then he was and forsaken. The before the sins. eclipse. Yeah. The week before the eclipse. Yep. So hmm. um, it's kind of there's, there's this blasphemous narrative going on here. And they were going to do it on the 15th, which has no significance that I can find other than I thought that was pretty funny, the hot and cold running, you know, Godzilla's. But, um, but they moved it to Good Friday for a reason. And we all know it. We all hmm. know it. Yeah. yeah. Just like... Uh just like the Rothschild that just passed, mm -hmm. um, he planned his death to the day because he says he will control his life and his death. He won't let God dictate it. So essentially, he, he uh, what's it called when you euthanize yourself? But it was mm -hmm. six weeks, six days, something, something. It came out to 666. I put it in the chat yesterday, but it was, it was very weird. interesting. It was, yeah. So much weird. weird stuff going on in the world today. Super weird. Yeah, super I, weird. I don't remember what it was from. It was from a certain date. It was six, but it was also 17 months, 17 days from the queen dying. Hmm. Yeah. It, it was, uh, um, make that stuff up. <laughs> yeah. It's, it, it, Watchful nailed it though. The amount of weird stuff happening, I'm losing track of it. it normally, you know. could cling on, you could cling on to something for a month. You're like this is the weird thing for this month. Yeah, uh, it's getting over. It's overwhelmingly weird. <laughs> I can't yeah, well, keep yeah. up with it anymore. Uh, I need a you know, spreadsheet. I kind of feel like since the devil doesn't have the fruit of the spirit, he doesn't have the Holy Spirit. So he doesn't have love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, or self control. He's got to fire mm. all of his guns at once at us because he's got no self-control. And he's got mm. little time. Yeah. So that's what he I knows. feel. I mean, I feel like everything's coming at us at once. Yeah. He knows he has little time. Yeah. Well, back to Antarctica, Jeremiah sixteen nineteen says, O Lord, my strength and my fortress, my refuge in the day of afflictions, the Gentiles shall come to you from the ends of the earth. And say, surely our fathers have inherited lies, worthlessness, and unprofitable things. 
Doesn't that sound like what we're talking about right now? (laughs) It's like, surely Hollywood, surely Hollywood and our government have inherited lies, worthlessness, and unprofitable things. (laughs) Um, Yeah. You know, and that that just brings us to dumbs, these deep underground military bases. You know, Mm. did they dig too deep and did they access something that they shouldn't have? You know, it's interesting that you say that because in one of Filler Schneider's um, videos where he's describing his first incident, it instantly made my mind think about several of the NDEs I've watched. And one of the things they say in these NDEs is that the smell is so putrefying that they've never smelled anything like it. It's just, it's a horrible stench that you can, you'll never be able to get out of your mind. And that was the first thing that Phil Schneider said when they cracked that hole in the bottom of that cave is that a stench came out that he had never smelled before, that it was the worst smell he had ever smelled. Mm-hmm. Wow. Yeah, I'm sure that rotting, putrefying, burning flesh is, yeah. Well, it's more about the demons and what they smell like. It's Mm -hmm. not, it's, it's, yeah, I'm sure it's a combination, but um, these, these demons, the, uh, whatever they are down there, they have a horrible stench to them that uh, Mm -hmm. it it puts off a very unique smell that uh, is unrecognizable. And nothing on this planet is like it. But I'm with you. Did they yeah. did they go too deep? Yeah. Well, and you know, it's funny because people who have seen Bigfoot or Bigfoot has gotten closer, they, they say, oh, my gosh, you just, it, the smell is horrible. And I know that this sounds crazy, guys, but Dog Man and Moth Man, too, and people who have seen those, <laughs> mostly in Texas <laughs> and Colorado. Those people might be high, though. <laughs> but... Uh, <laughs> But yeah, um, they, they say these things really smell. Um, hmm. so, so, you know, if they did dig too deep, we know, we know that the Bible tells us that there are chambers under the earth where God mm. has, has, is keeping fallen angels. Um, he is keeping, um, you know, people who are going to be in big trouble <laughs> at, at the judgment, um, yeah, there's there's holding chambers under the earth. So um, I I had to I hadn't really looked at hell before, and so I I dug out a bunch of research. So there's there's a place called Gehenna, which is the lake of fire. Okay, right. right. So Gehenna and the lake of fire is one part of hell. Okay, that's supposed to so, be after the judgment. Yeah. Now this is the place where the damned go after their resurrection to the final judgment. And it is a physical place of torment. And uh, all of the places that talk about Gehenna, the lake of fire, are all in Revelation 19 and 20. Yeah. And this is what I was referring to when Christopher and I were talking earlier about NDEs, is when they describe the horrible suffering, this is what I think that they might be seeing. And I'm wondering if those NDEs, because I always look at the prophet. So, you know, if these these are people who are going one direction and then they have these NDEs and it dramatically changes the direction of their life, I'm wondering if they're not seeing Gehenna. I th- well, I no, think Hades, they are. Hades is hate. Well, Hades is also a very horrible place as well. It's just not the burning lake of fire. There's a lot of horrible things going on in the first hell. That's just my belief. Yeah. Well, and actually come to find out, and I didn't know this until I started looking into it, Hades has two parts. Right. Okay. So now Hades is the Greek word. Sheol is the Hebrew word for this place, um, and it's the place where the souls of the dead go to wait for the resurrection as their bodies remain in the grave. Right. So their bodies are in the grave, their souls are in this waiting place, so it's temporary. Um, and this place is going to be destroyed at the time of the final judgment. So I don't know if it's going to be full when it's destroyed or empty, but it will be destroyed. But it has two parts. There's a nice part. And a bad part, the nice part is called paradise. And uh, in the Greek translation, uh, it comes to Gan Eden. Uh, I mean, mm. it's Garden of Eden, and in Hebrew, it's Gan Eden. So it's a paradise. So when Jesus said, today you will be with me in paradise, is that is that what he was talking about when he was talking to that thief? He might have been. Mm-hmm. You know, and we know that there's... Um, 
uh, Abraham's bosom, okay, um, when Jesus talked about Lazarus. And we know that Lazarus, uh, we know of a Lazarus in the Bible, and he was dead for four days. And then Jesus resurrected him. And then later, he's telling the story uh, when, you know, when he's trying to describe hell to these people, or Hades, um, he describes uh, this place where Lazarus, this beggar who has been, been, you know, taking the scraps from this rich man, you know, for years, um, has died. But he's in Abraham's bosom. He's safe. He's being fed and cared for um, in Abraham's bosom. And there's a chasm between him and this rich man. And the rich man absolutely knows where he's at. He knows what's going on. He is fully cognizant of the past, the present, and the future. And he looks over there and he says, Oh, please let send Lazarus over with some water for my tongue. And Abraham says, Well, I can't do that. There's a great chasm, you know. And he says, Oh, please send somebody back to tell my brothers how horrible this is. And basically, Abraham says, Hey, we, we sent the prophets and y'all killed them. So even, and then this is what I thought was really interesting. This is Jesus telling this story, or is it a story? We don't know, because we know Lazarus did die and was resurrected. Now he's talking about Lazarus. So right. he says, even if a man came back from the dead, they would not believe. Lazarus hmm. did come back from the dead. So is Jesus saying Y'all don't believe Lazarus, and I raised him from the dead. <laughs> Nobody believes him. Is that what he's saying? Wow. I don't know. But so, so this paradise, the nice part of, of Hades, um, is Abraham's bosom. Um, it is, you know, like a garden of paradise. The bad part of Hades, now this gets complicated too. So Hades has two parts. Now the bad part of Hades has two parts. <laughs> so have there's you ever, Have mm -hmm. you ever read Dante's Inferno? That's really good reading, Paradise Lost and stuff. That explains a lot of this stuff. No, I have not. I should. I should. Yeah, it's very detailed. <laughs> it's an eye opener. But anyways, I didn't mean to cut you off. Dante's yeah, so Inferno, Paradise Lost. So there's Hades, and that is a place of punishment. Then there's Tartarus, and Tartarus mm -hmm. is the depths of Sheol, the lowest part of Sheol, the lowest part of Hades. And that's the deepest, meanest part where Satan and his angels are. And that's Proverbs 9.18, man does not know that the Rephaim are there, that her guests are in the deeps of Sheol. The Rephaim mm -hmm. are half-breeds. So yeah. not only are the fallen angels there, they're half-breed children. That's that's where they the, go. The Nephilim when they died. Yeah. And 2 Peter 2, 4, having thrown them, the angels who sinned against God at Mount Hermon, into Tartarus, where they are being kept for judgment. Hmm. So hmm. did somebody dig too deep and access any of these places? Is that what Maybe. we did? Because we know that hell in all these forms that the Bible speaks of is under the earth. Um, are they, did they discover the lair of fallen angels? Did they exchange women and children for hidden, hidden knowledge? Is that what all this trafficking is about? Is that what all these blood sacrifices and rituals are about? All these UFO abductions and sexual experiments, is that what this is all about? Is accessing fallen angels through these underground places in Antarctica? I mean, obviously, they, Kong told us that the entrance to, to the empty earth or the innards of the earth is through Antarctica. So did Admiral Byrd in the 60s. Ooh, tell us more. Uh, we've talked about it before, uh, and this is public yeah. knowledge. Anybody can Google uh, Admiral Byrd. He flew to the North Pole and the South Pole. He was, uh, a, he was a, an admiral for the military. He huh. flew a science expedition there in the 50s and 60s, and his report was he flew in to a cave that seemed too big, and it opened up into hollow earth. 
and they ruined his career when he came back with the story. He had to sign some stuff, said he's not allowed to talk about it. Eventually, he went public, and uh, it was a real big ordeal. They made him look like he was crazy, but you guys have to understand, this guy was an admiral. You know, people, your reputation, and to become an admiral, it requires someone of immense stature. So this guy just didn't make this up. Mm -hmm. uh, it was it's clear that they were covering their tracks but um this is a i mean there's you can go on youtube or rumble and just type in admiral bird and you'll find a million videos on this topic it's fascinating he's the first one that really discovered the secrets of antarctica hmm. yeah yeah well you know it's funny cuz i've i've listened to several podcasts cuz again these people they come right out and they say i ca i cannot do a video you know, but there are people who have worked underground in these bunkers. And one of the things that they say, number one, they talk about the smell of these Nephilim. And mm -hmm. everything is very compartmentalized. So you might be working on this project, but but you don't know what the guys in the next room or the next room are doing. And so yes. everybody's doing a part, but nobody sees the whole. They're not allowed and, to talk. Yeah. And they talk about there is... Uh, a level, because uh, there's many, many levels, like 36, 37 levels. And there's a yeah. level that, that man, men cannot go down past unless they have like this ridiculous security uh, clearance. My and that, clearance. Yeah. And they, they call it the freak show. Hmm. And that is where the guys that come back, they're like, no, these, these are fallen angels. And they are forbidden from speaking the name of Jesus or Christ. Oh, yeah, it terrifies them. And you won't get anybody <laughs> to come on TV and talk about this. And the last time someone did this was Phil Schneider and his partner, and both of them were uh, ended up gone. And they, wow. they made several examples of people that come back to talk about this stuff, and no one will risk that because they will find you. It doesn't matter who you are, where you are. If you open your mouth, they will find you. So, but, but what will they let you talk about? UFOs, whistleblowers everywhere on UFOs. Why? Yeah. Why can you talk about UFOs, but you can't talk about fallen angels? Because they're redirecting. You know, they they want you to think that there's little green men flying around in the sky. They would rather that that lie be believed, other than the actual truth that the Bible is real and that the fallen angels from the book of Genesis and Enoch are underground and they're responsible for everything that we see going on that would create panic and the whole world would come to Christ. So they can't have that. That's right. Yeah. No. Can't have no. that. Well, can't have you believing gotta, reality. Yeah. And they got to push that UFO narrative because that's probably going to be one of the great deceptions is, sure. you know, our space brothers coming back to rescue us when they're not extraterrestrial, they're interdimensional, they're fallen angels. For sure. They always have been. Yeah. It's, 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 so. it's just like the reason why they don't talk about, um, ah, what's the name, that guy's name again? I forget it every show. Um, the one that discovered everything. Um, I posted Marco his Polo? videos. Oh, sorry. Marco Polo. Oh, Ron Wyatt. <laughs> Ron Wyatt, right? Oh, Ron so Wyatt. I love this is Ron why Wyatt. I talk about. It's why I mentioned Ron Wyatt so much because he discovered all this stuff in the eighties. I mean, solid, yeah. solid to the core proof of all of this stuff. The news never talks about this stuff. It's all been dampened and silenced because the mm -hmm. the evidence is so convincing that it would bring the entire planet to Christ. Imagine if they put this on the front page of news if CNN was talking about Ron Wyatt's. Uh, his adventures and his evidence. The, the revival and evangelism would be off mm -hmm. the charts. They can't have that, which is why yeah. they keep that information suppressed. Yeah, mm -hmm. Noah's Ark, the Ark of the Covenant, uh, the Red Sea Crossing, all those things are very real, and, and he's proven it, but they they have to silence him. And he died, too. Did he not die of cancer? Is that what he died of, was cancer? I can't remember. That's really sad, though. His sons are doing interviews now on his name, though. His mm -hmm. sons were there with him on all his adventures, too. Yeah. Well, and Marco Polo came to mind because, you know, Marco Polo, <laughs> uh, 
he came back. Well, he didn't come back. He went to China, and he sent word back that there were these these worms that made the most luxurious fabric. People thought he was crazy. Oh, well, silkworms. Then he, huh. there was this powder that made that exploded and made beautiful lights in the sky. Well, that would be gunpowder, and they were using it to make fireworks. Right? Yeah. That's what the Chinese are really good at. And then he also talked about the dragons that were pulling the emperor's chariot. Now, it's funny how the first two turned out to be real, but there's no way that the third could. Oh, those dragons, mm. those couldn't be real. Well, yeah, they are. And the reason they don't want us to believe that they're real is because they worship that dragon. They worship mm. it. Jim, Jim Cornette said that he died from bone cancer. Ah. Uh, Mm. Yeah. Of course. Well, of course. They got yeah. it. Yep. So, anyway. Well, the good news is, guys, I would just tell you, um, it, it's really easy to get carried away with this stuff. And I, I love the research. I really do. I love looking it up. I love looking at things and saying, what are they really telling us in this movie? <laughs> and how yeah. does that relate to the Bible? Oh, my gosh. This is the two beasts. Oh, my hmm. goodness. Um, I love to look at that kind of stuff, but you know what? It's it's more important that we we look at Jesus. We we exactly. shouldn't be looking for the Antichrist. We should be looking for Jesus. And yep. uh, I would tell you guys, everybody, go open your Bibles, read Psalm ninety seven. It's the song of praise to the Sovereign Lord, and you know it just starts out with. The Lord reigns. Let the earth rejoice. Let the multitude of isles, the multitude mm. of islands, be glad. You know, and it talks about him burning up his enemies. <laughs> Woo! Go, oh, Jesus. All I know, guys, is that the Bible rocks. And our God is amazing. He is so cool. There's, there's no Marvel Comics see, superhero. There's no Godzilla or anything like that that even compares to the power and the majesty and, and the, the glory of Jesus Christ. No, none of it. And the Bible, I mean, we can, we can look at these movie posters and we can look at the headlines and we can go, oh my gosh, The Simpsons. We can look at The Simpsons and go, wow, they're prophesying. No, look at the Bible. It prophesies. It told us all of this thousands of years in advance. Our God is real and he's yep. coming for us. He's coming to rescue us. Because the it first is. time he came, he defeated sin and death. The second time, he is going to defeat the demonic realm. That is what he's coming for. And I really try to keep it simple. And what I mean by that is I just focus on a relationship with Christ, and mm -hmm. everything else comes naturally. Uh, yep. I yeah. enjoy reading the Bible and just sticking with Scripture, and I don't get caught up in all the legality of many other churches and ministries and stuff of that nature. I just focus on a relationship with Him and when you, at least for me, if that's my focus point, everything else naturally falls in place. Yeah. yeah. If, you know, if you follow his footsteps and try to be like Christ, you can't go wrong. That's just my take. Amen. Yeah. So. so faith over fear every time, guys, faith over fear, uh, no matter what's in front of you. And, and I always have to tell myself, you know, what does the word say? It says, do not fear those who could, who can only kill the body. Yeah. That's right. And, you know, if I'm ever confused about what to do, I know this sounds cheesy, but it's just, what would Jesus do? I say that to my children all yeah. the time. What would Jesus do? Would he do that? Would mm -hmm. I do that? If I'm ever at an impasse, what would Jesus do? And the spirit tells me instantly, and there's never any question, never a yeah. doubt ever. So it's just my rule of thumb. And it's always been easy for me uh, because I try to keep it simple. Cause so many, so many people make this very complex. Um, yeah. I, I debate and I don't even enjoy the debate, but there's many people on social media that message me every day and they go into this long wisted, you know, blah, 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 blah. And I'm like, look, I just want a relationship with Christ, whatever else you're talking about. You're just overcomplicating it. 
You know, you're throwing stumbling blocks in front of people that may be on the fence. Uh, it's all about love and a relationship with Christ. If you keep mm -hmm. it that simple and just read your Bible, everything else naturally falls in place. You don't yeah. have to get yeah. legalistic about it. Love is the only thing that really frightens the demonic realm. Love. For sure. and, and the Bible tells us in James, God is love. He literally right. is love. And that's what terrifies the demonic. They hate his so. name, too. Mm-hmm. It, because it's synonymous with love. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Well, cool. Yep, so. Well, that's all I Thank got. <laughs> that was awesome. Thank you so much. See, I knew that would go by quick. Watch, well, she killed it. Yeah, you were right, man. We covered a lot of ground. Although, to be fair, there is a lot of scripture left here about Hades and Sheol. Uh, oh, that's, Gahana, you know, actually, Carteris. I sent that to y'all to be able to put in the... Um, Description. Uh, the description box in the notes. It's really important, I think, for for uh, people to be able to check us, to be able to check yeah. our work. And here it is. We've 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 got the notes. If you want to look up anything, all of the scriptures on Hades, Sheol, Tartarus, um, if you want to look up the, the scriptures about uh, uh, the ends of the earth, they're all there. There they I'm are. Gonna and you I'm can gonna check publish our work. It in a, I'm going to publish it in a blog post. So, okay. um, folks, if yeah. you want everything that she's done all her homework on, um, you'll find it on our website. I'm gonna, I'll do a blog post tomorrow to publish everything. And there's a lot of data. This is worth looking at. So she covered yeah. a lot of the facts, but um, I'll create a post so that you know, for folks that are not registered on our website, I strongly recommend it. Uh, it's free. We're building a community there. At some point, we're gonna launch our own uh, community there. So it's gonna be really neat. As things move along. So, yep. yeah, pull out your Bibles and check us. Really, pull out your Bibles and check us. Absolutely. It's got to line up with Scripture. Yep. Yeah. Well, well, Kip, thanks so much for coming out. It was awesome yeah, thanks, as Kip. usual. Yep. I'll see you guys again soon. Take care. Yeah, I'm going to. Okay. Bye, honey. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. <laughs> Bye. Thanks for watching the segment from our live show. We're live every night, 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, except for the Sabbath. See you tomorrow.